Well, clarophiles and clarophyllets across the fruited plain and elsewhere, this is kind of a record because here I am about to produce a second video in a single day. And that's pretty much amazing. It's never happened before, I don't think. Anyway, I did have a little bit of time, so I thought I would just present this to you uh, and uh, let it rattle around in your head and you think about it. Um, so, I asked the question that seems obvious to everyone, right? What's the barrel for? Well, be kind of hard to get the air down the rest of the clarinet from the mouthpiece without one of these, right? Unless you made a one-piece, one-piece clarinet. They just went up to the mouthpiece. So, what does the barrel do? Why is the barrel there? In fact, why not just make a one-piece clarinet and take it right up to the mouthpiece? Well, the reason is that as the clarinet changes, temperatures change, as the clarinets warm up, the pitch changes, and you have to have a way of adjusting the pitch. And you could, by the way, just pull the mouthpiece out. You have kind of an extended socket and a longer a longer mouthpiece so that it's longer maybe down to there so you would have room to pull out at the mouthpiece but whatever that is uh, the evolution of the clarinet has not lended to that so barrels are between the mouthpiece and the clarinet to do what to adjust the pitch that's what barrels are for you know for all the faults of the german the earlier system uh, the German clarinets, and there are a lot of them, um, for all the faults, they play rather evenly. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't see the mania among German clarinet players for going crazy about the cottage industries that have grown up here with the French clarinet a, spe a specific clarinet, especially in the West, and that is people going crazy about bur bells and barrels and mouthpieces and ligatures and all kinds of ancillary things like that. People wanting and searching, and search they've got their perfect clarinet. It's been perfect now for 50 years, but they keep searching maniacally for all these um, extraneous parts. Just to make the point, for me, this right here, here and here, that's the clarinet. And then the bell, of course, and the barrel are interchangeable. I mean, they, they can be changed out for sure. But why do people go crazy? The barrel should be just for tuning. And for the most part, it seems to me the German clarinet players use the barrel just for that and they don't go so much crazy. Uh, some may, you know, look, German clarinet players are not immune from insanity. Uh, it seems to be, which seems to be epidemic among clarinet players in uh, the the French world, the French system world, or the what we call the Berm system world, which people incorrectly pronounce BAME. It's not BAME. It's Berm. It's a it's an umlaut o. But anyway, uh, what we do here in the West, and I did this too, you know, as a as a young player out of graduate school and <clears throat> teaching, you know, private lessons and all that with students. Uh, you know, we never thought of the barrel as something for tuning unless there was some horrible issue, like you were playing 20 cents flat You, because you stupidly chose a mouthpiece that was wacko inside. So you had to compensate for that because you couldn't get up the pitch by getting a shorter barrel. Or you chose another mouthpiece that was wacko uh, internally, acoustically, and so you're playing unbelievably sharp. 
I have a story about that in one of the videos earlier, uh, way back, way back. Uh, which one it is, I don't know. Uh, you'll have to wade through quite a few videos to find it. Uh, but nevertheless, you can have a, you know, a mouthpiece that puts you way, way, way sharp. So what do you do? You got to find a longer barrel. And of course, you're playing in various groups. Uh, but besides that, most clarinet players are going around looking for barrels and bells to improve the response and to also fix color issues. What are those issues that they want to improve in response? The stuffy right hand clarion register. When you play over the middle break, you have very free blowing throat tones, and then you hit all those long pipe notes, and a bell B often that sounds like a rag, makes a clarinet sound like a rag has been stuffed in it. You have to compensate for that. So you're looking around for some kind of bells that are going to fix this issue because the bell, uh, the bell is a problematic thing. It's not really making the clarinet blow properly. You're trying to fix that with the bell. Well, what about the left hand, the brightness and the instability and the uh, lack of proper uh, uh, positive resistance um, to hold the shape, stability, and color of the upper clarion pitches. Well, you go crazy looking for barrels, looking for a barrel that's going to cure that problem because you don't like the the shape, color, um, and uh, lack of uh, pitch, color, shape, stability that you find in the in the notes of the left hand clarion that blow too freely. So you're always looking for barrels to do that. I did it. I know dozens of professional clarinet players that did it. They all played the same uh, brand of clarinet. And that was their perfect clarinet, but they were always looking for bells and barrels. And that's my point. Is the clarinet you have to do that with, is it really that perfect? I don't think so. Like, for instance, my 576 is beautifully balanced right hand to left hand. So the responsiveness of the notes over the middle break are just fine out of the throat tones. You can play softly in and out of the throat tones into the long pipe right hand notes. And also, when you play, um, the say, the C scale in the clarion register, Instead of getting oh 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 e e e, you get oh 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 all the way up. All the pitches are the same color and same shape. Why? Okay. Because the right hand and the left hand are resistance balanced, so that they will give you the same results in color, in pitch, and in stability, in terms of dynamic changes. Uh, and the tuning is very excellent on these clarinets. Now, I'm not just bringing up my clarinet as an example because I started out talking about the German clarinet, which is a more even instrument in terms of uh, what's required of in, in, in terms of any change that you have to go from playing the middle break up into the upper clarinet notes. But here's my larger point, okay? If there is a resistance hierarchy where one section is freer blowing than the other section, then that creates a number of problems that you have to compensate for and adjust for behind your nose. And that makes clarinet playing a lot more difficult. It also makes picking reeds a lot more difficult because you're always trying to get a reed that has enough weight so the upper clarion notes don't thin out but yet it's free blowing enough so that the longer pipe notes don't sound like a rag stuffed in them. So you need freedom here and you need resistance here. Can you see there's a problem in that? Yeah, there is a problem in that. But the more and better balanced the clarinet is in terms of its matching resistance from right hand to left hand, then the less problems that you have with any of this and when you do use a barrel or look for a barrel, it's because you're trying to correct the pitch and you're trying to get a barrel that gives you the best pitch relationship or the best general pitch relationship because barrels can only minimally affect 
any specific areas of the clarinet. Barrels will just give you a general kind of um, pitch adjustment, uh, with the exception of the throat tones, because, of course, the longer the barrel is, the lower the throat tones are going to be in relationship to all the other tones that are lowered. And the shorter the barrel, the higher the, the throat tones are going to be in relationship to the other tones, which are also higher, but not as high. So, basically, when you're looking for a barrel, you're not looking for the Holy Grail that's going to fix what's broken, actually, in this clarinet, in the right hand and left hand. The best you can do with barrels, bells, and mouthpieces, in that case, if that is the problem, that imbalance and resistance in your horn, the best you can possibly do is try to sort of gradually or slightly mask it. But the mask notwithstanding, the problem's still going to be there, albeit just on a slightly subtle, more subtle level. So the answer is. The answer is the answer is a kind of equivocation, isn't it? Like, what is the barrel for? Well, if the right hand and left hand of your clarinet are broken, the barrel's an attempt, part of an attempt, reeds, mouthpieces, bells, and barrels. The barrel is kind of a partial attempt to try to fix what's broken in another place. And the results, because the actual breakage is in another place and not in the barrel, the results is only, at best, partially satisfying. Think about it.